Hello, guys, and welcome to another episode on the Stretch Street Podcast. This is the Energetic EJ, and I am super excited to be here as always. So going right into it without much to say, I have a lovely guest all the way from Denmark today. My guest today is the founder of Passion for Achievement, which is all about personal growth, high performance and lifestyle design for online entrepreneurs and freelancers. He is a number one best-selling author and obsessed with building a world-class lifestyle through personal growth tools. Here is why you should listen to him and apply the life lessons he will be sharing with us in today's episode to make your own life experiences richer, fuller, and better. All right. Here are some of the things he has achieved. He escaped years of drug abuse, crime and mental illness. He climbed from warehouse worker to training and managing over a hundred people. He built passion for achievement to thousands of customers and clients all over the world. He wrote a number one international Amazon best-selling book on lifestyle design for entrepreneurs. He built his dream physique in less than six months. He designed a dating life is very content with and an incredible circle of social influence. He's been top 1% in Europe and or nationally in multiple hobbies. Guys, he definitely has a lot to share with us today. So please welcome with me on the show today, Daniel Hug. Hi, Daniel. How are you doing today? Hey, hey I'm super excited to be here. I think it's going to be a, a great conversation and just yeah, really happy to, to be on. Awesome. Awesome. Gr- glad to have you here. Now I'm going to start with this achievement, right? I want to know a little bit more about them, but let me ask you, you know, the last one that says you've been top 1% in Europe and or nationally in multiple hobbies. What are these hobbies? And you know, how is that? How did you come about the 1% thing as well? Yeah. So the reason I put that in there is to kind of prove that the high performance methods that I've been kind of learning through through time are are universal and they work with just about everything you want to do, whether that's career or it's a, it's a health challenge or it's a, a hobby of yours, you can you can use this framework. And so these hobbies have been uh, different. They can be video games. It have been uh, martial arts. It have been. Um, I did a lot of parkour at some point where I was you know traveling around Europe um, with some of the best people in, in in Europe doing that. So so yeah, this idea of pointing at something and saying that right there, I want to get really good at that, is something I find really fun and I find it exciting and I'm happy when I'm when I'm learning and progressing and so I try obviously to focus on the things that truly matter so my, my career my health my relationships all of that but the hobby thing was there to show that it, it works for just about everything right that's that's good to know okay so when you say you know doing all of that and looking at all these different achievements that you've come about um in your years what was the starting point for you in making this shift and creating this framework that has worked for you or that you're now using and applying to help other people across the globe. Absolutely. So everything that you mentioned on, on that beautiful list, I was the opposite of all of that at one point. I was very off track in life, especially during my, my teen years. I had a little bit of trauma growing up, all of that. So that kind of pushed me out of, out of school. I was going to school maybe three times per week. And when I showed up, I would go, you know, I would, I'd arrive too late. I'd go home too early. I would start hanging around the wrong crowd. Wouldn't take care of my health. That I, I wouldn't take my education seriously. Wouldn't really have a job. And so all of that. And I just realized, man, this is not going to end well. This is get worse and worse. It's not the right path. And I decided that if I'm actually going to give this life thing a chance, if I'm actually going to do it, then I want to do it big. I want a, a world-class life. I want a life that's worth living. So so I'm not just going to do something that is tolerable or something I'm okay with. I want to really build something where I have the health that I want and the career and the finances and the freedom, all of that. So that was, that was the, the turnaround. And so the first step of that was to figure out, okay, if I want a world-class life, the the first question that comes to mind is what is a world-class life, right? What are my values and what kind of life do I want to build around those values? So that was the first step of my journey was, was figuring that out. But what was the thing that woke you up? Because, you know, most times when we're going through those kind of um, experiences in life where it feels like we're off, totally off track, the, the scenario in my head is almost always when you say, you know, energy, um, you need an external force to kind of take you out or snap you out or wake you up to say, come on, dude, what are you doing with your life? What was that, you know, moment for you? Yeah. And I have exactly, uh, exactly that moment. I was 
on a kind of a bit of a vacation home or summer house, whatever you want to call it in English, with some of my friends over the weekend would, would rented it. And it was just the, the wrong crowd. Like I said, it was a bunch of alcohol, a bunch of drugs, and just basically what we'd be doing every weekend. And then um, one of them came up with this fun little game where we should kind of guess or estimate uh, how how old we think we were going to be. You know, and some person would say, oh, I think I'll be 85. Another mm. one would say, oh, I think I can do 92. And then it was my turn, and I just completely killed the mood because with a stone-cold face, I said, 21. And everyone was like, no, come on, Daniel, for real, for real. How, how old are you going to be, you think? I said, there, there's no way that I'm going to make it past 21. Like, the way I'm going now with my, my you know, with, with the drugs and the, you know, crashing cars and the crime, all of that, there's just, I don't, I don't see any scenario where I'm going to make it past that. Oh, wow. And that kind of scared me, not for my own sake, because I didn't really care too much about life. I thought it was kind of, it wasn't really, uh, it, life didn't seem like a, a good deal. It, it seemed mm. like it was paid, more, more pain, more, more sacrifice than it was, than it was good. So I was, right. I, I didn't care too much, but I had a, uh, I had an amazing mother and a wonderful little brother. And I just felt like I can't do this to them. I mm. just, just and my, so, so, so then my, my family would have lost another family member, all of that. I just could, could not do that to them. So it started off being for them. Um, and then, but I still had this idea that I'm not just going to, if I just fix my life a little bit, it's still going to be painful. And then I'm going to live a painful life until I'm 90. So if I am doing this thing for them, then I got to do it right. And right. so, yeah. Wow. That's, that's a, that's a, that's a huge shift just from a game and then, you know, wake up call. And then, so when, when you got on that journey, now take us through the journey and the framework you talk about so that, you know, people who are listening can say, okay, maybe if there's something I can just latch onto to say, okay, if I could start from here as well, like he did, I might be able to turn my life around as well. Absolutely. So the very first thing I did was I started just Googling the most simple terms. Things like how do we build a good life? How do we become successful? How do we blah, blah, blah. And very quickly, I realized that personal growth was a big part of it. So I started wishing, you know, I started pu pu pushing and um, putting personal growth books on my Christmas list and my birthday wishing list and all these things. And I would just consume and read and read and read. Right. Eventually, I got a job as a cashier. I was working 11 hours per day as a cashier mm -hmm. and then. By night, I would oftentimes work as a dishwasher and everything I made, I was still living at home, right? So I didn't have many expenses. So everything I made, I just poured into... Poured back into personal development. Yes. Wow. And what got very clear was, like I said before, the first step is clarity. Mm. I got I to gotta figure out what exactly it is that I'm trying to do. What am I building? And, and when I say, what am I building? I, I, don't, I don't think it's enough to say, I would like to be healthy. Because mm. that can mean a billion things. You know, I will have people come up to me and say, then you know, I'd really like to have more money. You know, I give them a dollar and I say, cool, you made it. What's you have next? more money? Right? <laughs> yeah. So, so what I would want to know is, you know, hey, Daniel, I would like to do 60K a month in revenue with my, with my business at an 80% right. profit margin within the next six months. So, so I try to get really clear. And so my objective as the first step was to kind of paint a very vivid, a very clear picture, picture. of my life that kind mm. of included my values. So my values, you know, as people, we have sometimes some of the same values. We almost all of us value help. We value relationships. We Relationship, all have some kind yeah. of financial stability, but stability, also we have yeah. some, some values that are individual. So for me, freedom is big, but for others, mm. perhaps it's more of a safety slash comfort thing. So, so identify my values and then build a life or design a life around that. And that was the, that was the first step of, of many. Right, right. So then what? how did the journey progress for you? What Can you share with us one or two major challenges you had in that? Because, you know, when you've been used to, um, do, you, do you mind if I ask how old you are now? I'm 24. 24. But the turning point started at what age? Around 17 but then it was a little bit of it wasn't you know in the movies it's like exactly it happens, and everything is perfect afterwards <laughs> but there was a lot of back and forth because i still exactly. had all my friends that were doing all these things and i still didn't really have my health or anything like that so it's that's yeah, when it started going back and forth okay 
exactly what I was trying to pinpoint because I know that when you've lived, you know, what you've been used to for like 17 years and then you have this epiphany and you want to switch, you know, you have it, you, you have the clarity, you know exactly what to do. Well, oftentimes like, yes, I want to work out just 10 minutes every day for the next six weeks. And two days into it's like, oh my gosh, I don't think I can do it. So what, what are some challenges you face on that, you know, shift? And, you know, let, let share some of the challenges you, you face and then I'll come back to what are the life lessons you, you learned from those experiences. Absolutely. So I, I will say, though, if you have the clarity on exactly what you want to do and how you, you, you're well on your way, that's a really good first step. So because I think I think a lot of people that set New Year's resolutions and stuff like that and then fail, a lot of it is actually they, they're not as clear as they probably should be. But then even if, when you have clarity, it's, there are a bunch of challenges, obviously, such as overwhelm, or procrastination or. One thing I try to do a lot is I try to eliminate the decision because if you're putting a piece of cake in front of me and you're putting, putting a salad in front of me, you know, sometimes maybe I'll pick the salad. I like to think sometimes I would be picking the salad, but certainly there'll be times where I'd be picking the cake as well. So I like to remove the decision altogether by, by, by making it routine, by making it a system. So I'm, I'm very big on habits and systems. So instead of saying, you know, let's say you've identified that to build your world class life, you want health. And part of that is maybe you want more muscle mass. And then you've identified to do that, you should lift weights. Okay. Then we'll build a system around that. So instead of saying, uh, I will work out when I feel like it and I have the energy and I have the time and the stars are aligned. I think it's better to say, I will work out on my way home from work on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for 45 minutes, right? So because now there's no decision. Yeah. And one thing I would, I would recommend to people is you can start as small as you need to. In fact, I encourage it because I see a lot of this, um, you know, I will go from never having worked out ever to now I want to work out two hours per day, six days per week, and I need to eat only lemon water and broccoli. And it's, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't work. It's not sustainable. Right. Many of the things that I believe are the ingredients of success are mm. things like uh, discipline, momentum, and sustainability. And you have none of that if you're doing these intense, um, fast solutions. Moves, right. Yeah. So so build a system. And I, I actually recommend starting very, very slow because the tricky part is getting started. We all know that, right? The tricky part is actually going on the walk. But once you're out there, you can do five minutes more and five minutes more and five minutes more. Right, so, right. So that's right. what I always tell people is the easiest thing in the world is to scale a system that is already a part of you. So mm. if you're reading five pages of a good book every night, you can probably read six as well. And if you can do that, you can probably read seven. If you're in the gym for 40 minutes, you can probably do 45. And so the, the, the tricky part is just getting started. So started. Mm. identify a system. Make it ridiculously small, and then you just scale once it's kind of a part of you. Right, right. So, so the main challenge is just having it to be a part of you, and which is the habit thing thing you talk about. So, do you have any hacks? I mean, you've shared some now, but do you have a specific system for for beating, let's say, procrastination? Like you said, like okay, fine, I will do it tomorrow. Oh, I'll do it next week. Or oh, I'll do it when the stars align. Like you said, are there any hacks that you can share to beat procrastination in particular? Because I think, like you said, sometimes people really get to the point where they can set the decisions, they can set the systems in place, but then that procrastination is just the biggest thing that they deal with. Like, because again, it's like. The time would never be perfect to do anything in this life. Like you just have to find a way. So do you have a hack or two that you can share with people? Like, okay, to beat procrastination, this is what has worked for me. You can try it out as well. Yeah. So, so perhaps I don't know if it's a hack, but maybe it is, but it's definitely a, an idea, which is one of my mentors. He told me that the two things in this world that scared him the most were momentum and a lack of momentum. And hmm. so having momentum is scary in a good way because you can just run through brick walls and, and there is no procrastination. You have tons of energy, all of that. And a lack of momentum is scary in a, in a bad way because it's that it leads to procrastination and overwhelm and a lack of confidence, all these things. So momentum is very, very big for me. So whether you're talking about a routine basis, so let's say, for example, with the weightlifting thing, I would, I would do everything that I can to 
get some momentum, which once again comes back to this idea of starting small. Honestly, mm. if you're listening to this right now and you've been thinking about going to the gym, I, I challenge you to go to the gym for five minutes. Literally just go, like go there in your gym clothes, go into the, to the locker room and then go home again. I, I promise. First of all, you're probably not going to do that, right? As soon as you're there, you'll probably work out anyway. But just set the barrier of entry very, very, uh, very low. And then you get a little bit of momentum and then you ride that and you nurture it and you protect yourself against it, uh, against, um, temptations that could possibly crack you away from that. We could talk about that as well. So, but also on a, on a per project basis, I know when I've been writing a book or if I'm writing an ebook or something like that, it's, it's so wild how productive I am, how, how in flow I am when I'm like 60% into the book versus like in the beginning, it's very, very difficult to just go, okay, I'll go from word number zero to word number one, right? It's very difficult. So once again, find something that, that you can do. So let's say I was going to write a book and I sat down and I said, okay, I'll write my book now. And I feel like, uh, maybe I should check my phone. Nah, maybe I should, maybe I'll do it in an hour. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. That's, clear indication for me that I'm in some way, shape or form overwhelmed or unclear on what I need to do or not confident that I can actually do what I need to do. Um, and so then you say, okay, well, I'll just write a chapter. If that doesn't work, you say, okay, look, I'll just write a, a, a bullet point until you get all the way down to, if you must, I'm just going to open the word document and I'll, I'll write one sentence. That's it. And I can go, I can go home. I can call the day off if I want. What happens for me when I do that and what happens for my clients is we write that first sentence and then we go, okay, I'll just, I'll finish this paragraph. And then, okay, I'll maybe I'll finish the page. And you know, and you look up and you're on page 17 and you're like, whoa, I'm still going. Yeah. So really getting started is just make it as easy as you possibly can to get started. I think a lot of people want to do this kind of beast mode thing where it's not, I have to go to the gym for three hours. Yeah, but you're not getting there if you expect yourself to do three hours. I think if you just, told yourself to get in there for 30 minutes maybe you'll end up being an hour yeah absolutely yeah. i can totally relate with that you know when i used to frequent the gym <laughs> now i don't anymore um i just do my little workout from the room but you know when i did that i set the intention like you know what i'm just doing 15 minutes nothing more just 15 minutes and then the way i anchored my at the time was i would go live so that I'm committed, like, okay, I'm going live. I don't care if anybody's watching, but I'm going to go live for 15 minutes. And there are days that I will go as far as 45, sometimes one hour. I'm like, oh my God, this is good, mm -hmm. right? So I love it. Like set the bar as low as possible and just, you know, start and just do it until you get that momentum that keeps you going. Now, one of the other things you mentioned is about relationship, about, you know, uh, building a, 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 a social circle and in, in, interesting social circle how you know does that work for you you know what can you share with us in that regard because i feel like at the end of the day when we talk about personal growth and development it's personal but it, there is a way it affects those around us and mm -hmm. no matter how great you think you are on your own if you don't learn how to relate with people around you, it's still going to come back to like, wh what is wrong with like, who are you? Like, you know, it's still going to be, it's either you end up being lonely or people just run away from you. And then at the end of the day, it's like, okay, well, so what's the point of building this personal development? So relationships are also very important. What can you talk to us about, about relationships? Yeah, absolutely. That's super important. So I would like to preface it by saying I'm, I'm not probably not the world's leading expert on relationships, but I have come from, I have come from, you know, having friends that now today have gotten 20, you know, 12 years uh, and all these things. So now today I feel like I'm surrounded by people that are twice as smart as me, twice as rich as me, twice as healthy. I'm just everyone in my life. I just feel like I'm lifted up and I'm learning from them and I'm, I'm sparring with them in a, perfect passionate way and so so i have had that kind of journey and i think i think a lot of it honestly not to sound like a broken record but a lot of it comes back to really understanding your values i think if you are not clear on your values and especially if you're a little bit lonely then you will very quickly just say yes to everyone um you know so if someone wants to hang out with you someone wants to spend time with you it, it doesn't really matter what their values are because you don't know yours and then it's just all random. And in general with life, if, if your intentions are random, you, you'll get very random results. So, so it's not like I'm seeking, you know, okay, how can I find a smart person and befriend him? It's not like that. It's more so that 
I know exactly what I find attractive in a partner. I know what I find attractive in a business partner. I know what I find attractive in a, in a friend. And, and then, and then I just let that come to me. Or sometimes you got to seek it, right? If I'm at, at an event or something like that, but, but really being clear on what it is that you can offer and what it is that you would like to have offered. Uh, I think it's such a big, big, big deal when it comes to relationships. Love it. I love it. Clarity still comes to play here. Like really, I think to build an amazing life, you just need to be clear about what you want and what you don't want. And sometimes I feel like, you know, people kind of don't know what they want. And I think it's okay to start with what you don't want. Like if you're not sure of what you want, please be at least be sure of what you don't want, what you don't like, what you don't want to see, because that would help you sieve out and then you eventually find out, okay, I think this is exactly what I want, or this is what I like, or this is what how I want to appear and everything. I think that's really um, wonderful. I love it when you said, you know, if you know your values and you're set on those values, it helps you sieve out in a room full of people to know, okay, this is the kind of person that I want to connect with so that you don't just connect randomly. Like if you, if you leave your life randomly, you would get a random result. That's a, that's a good one right there. Thank you so much. What would be your last word for any young person watching you right now saying, what? She, he started to think about life at 17 and now he's 24 and he's had all this achievement. What? What would you like to say to them to encourage them to be on their journey? Because some would be like, at, I've seen, I've interacted with people who are like 22, 25 and they're feeling all dejected, depressed, saying, you know, they don't have a life and everything. And I'm like, see, you're still young. You're still young. Like things, you can still change your life. So what would you have to say to somebody like that? To someone like that, I would say paint a picture as, as clear, as, as clearly and, and as detailed as you possibly can of what a life worth living would look like to you. Like go into the deepest of details. What kind of health would you have? What kind of finance? What kind of, we'll, we'll worry about the how later, but, but it, I promise it's possible. Just get really clear on it. And, and also, which kind of the same thing, but not really. Paint a picture of who you would like to be for you to respect yourself, for you to love yourself, for you to carry yourself in a way where it's like, I'm actually really proud of who I am. Not just, oh, I think I look good. Oh, I think I'm good at, at soccer. But like where you truly look in your mirror and you go, nice, well done. Well now, done. <laughs> what would that look like? And then get, get clear on it. And then you can kind of reverse engineer like from that and build systems that you know will help you, push you closer get to, to that, that every fantastic yeah. thank you so much thank you are there any projects you should look forward to from daniel so i actually just wrote a pdf called the seven pillars of a world-class life and that's kind of my seven values that i've tried to build this picture of my world-class life around i know many people will have some of the same values maybe some will have some different values but that is completely free it's on my uh, my website and also on my um my Instagram, you can just grab it and download it. I think that will help a lot of people with the clarity aspect, mm. which when, from my experience with working with clients is the most difficult part by far to do on your own. So if you do that, you'll be well on your way. Fantastic. So I'm going to get the link from you and I'm going to attach the link to this episode so you can get that clarity that you need to get on the journey to this beautiful life that you have designed for yourself. Thank you so much, Daniel, for taking the time to be here today. Um, I wish you all the very best on your journey, continually affecting and, you know, impacting lives as you go on your journey and um, keep being amazing. Thank you so very much. Have a lovely rest of the weekend and I'll stay in touch and let you know once the episode is ready to be published. Love it. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. All right, guys, this is where we try to curse in on this episode. I hope you've learned a, a thing or two. Thank you for being a part of today's episode. Until I come your way again next week, remember that challenges are not exclusive to you. Every single human on earth goes through a challenge or two. But when we sit and ask ourselves questions, sometimes just reflect, sometimes just, you know, um, ask for help. But Again, is when you think and say, okay, what is this thing here to teach me? You're able to distill, you know, the, the lessons that these challenges are teaching you. And that will make you a better person in life. So you can share your story at some point. So thank you for being a part of the show today. It's like, I'm here again next week. This is the Energetic EJ. And this is the Stretch Street Podcast. See you next week. Bye-bye.